We believe, we believe as Democrats that a society as blessed as ours, the most affluent democracy in the world's history, one that can spend trillions on instruments of destruction, ought to be able to help the middle class in its struggle, ought to be able to find work for all who can do it, room at the table, shelter for the homeless, care for the elderly and infirm, and hope for the destitute. And we proclaim as loudly as we can the utter insanity of nuclear proliferation and the need for a nuclear freeze, if only to affirm the simple truth that peace is better than war because life is better than death. This campaign has taught me much, that leaders must be tough enough to fight, tender enough to cry, human enough to make mistakes, humble enough to admit them, strong enough to absorb the pain, and resilient enough to bounce back and keep on moving. We must turn from finger-pointing to clasp hands. We must share our burdens and our joys with each other once again. We must turn to each other and not on each other and choose higher ground. To the Republicans, I say this. Take no comfort from this Democratic family tussle. Ronald Reagan has provided all the unity we need. Our faith that we can shape a better future is what the American dream is all about. The promise of our country is that the rules are fair. If you work hard and play by the rules, you can earn your share of America's blessings. Those are the beliefs I learned from my parents. And those are the values I taught my students as a teacher in the public schools of New York City. We are going to win. We are going to win because Americans across this country believe in the same basic dream. He intends to spend billions on sky wars in outer space. And that is why we must send him back to Hollywood, which is where both Star Wars and Ronald Reagan really belong. My fellow citizens, I present to you our leader, who never gave up in adversity, who came back against the odds, who won at this great convention, and who will win an even greater victory in November, the nominee of the Democratic Party, the next president of the United States, Walter Mondale.
When I grew up, and people ask us to imagine the future, we were full of dreams. But a few months ago, when I visited a grade school class in Texas and asked the children to imagine the f future, they talked to me about nuclear war. Lately, as we've neared the election, this administration has begun to talk about a safer world. But there's a big difference. As president, I will work for peace from my first day in office and not for my first day of campaigning for re-election. As president, as president, I will reassert American values. I'll press for human rights in Central America and for the removal of all foreign forces from the region. And in my first 100 days, I will stop the illegal war in Nicaragua.